Hey, how you doing? So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this Annie Leibovitz inspired edit in Adobe Photoshop. This is VRP member Greg Lampert's image, and I'm going to show you how to just create this and get some real mood and atmosphere within an image. So this particular image is inspired by this shot of Annie's, which has some really, really nice greens going on and some lovely skin tones as well. So we're going to be using that as inspiration. We're also going to be using some dust and scratches overlays, which you can find anywhere on the internet if you just search for them. And we're also going to be using a plugin as well. So if you haven't got that, that's fine. You can still do this. You just won't get this kind of painterly effect that I've got on this. Okay, so I'm going to revert back to the beginning and walk you through the process. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to match the color to this image here. Really, really simple and easy to do that now within Adobe Photoshop because of the different filters that we've got. So let's come to the Neuro filters. And what we want to do is we want to come to color transfer and select that to on. And then at the top here, we want to come to custom and I'm going to select an image that I want to use as a reference image. So it's this image here. So that's now going to overlay that. You've got some options here. You can keep it on lab or RGB. Preserve luminance will basically preserve the brightness of the image. So on this particular one, this particular image, when I click that, you can see that this will affect skin tones quite a bit. So I'm going to leave that off. Now you can also play around with this here so you can you can change the hue, you can change the brightness, color strength. So if you want to add a little bit more of that color into the shot, you can. I'm going to leave it as it is and come down to the bottom here and select new layer with layer mask and then press OK. So we can see there straight away, we've got similar colors to this image here. We've got them lovely greens that are coming through and it looks really, really nice. So what I want to do is come to the layer mask. I'm going to select the brush tool. I'm going to make sure that my foreground color is set to black and I'm going to drop this opacity down to around 40%. And what I'm going to do is just slightly paint over the skin. So I'm just going to take out some of that green. Now you can see that that's too much. I'm going to press Control Command Z to go back. I'm just going to drop that down to about 17%. That's better. So I'm just going to go over this and this is going to take just a little bit of that green out of her skin because we don't want her looking too green we want some color there and we can add some of this back later anyway so there we go we can see that's looking a little bit more natural now so once you've done that then we can come down to the bottom here come to color balance and again we can play around with these different settings so we can add some more green in we can add some more red in so depending on your image will determine how much of this you need to mess around with. You can add blues and yellows and you can also come into shadows and highlights if you want to as well. So now it's time to add some more contrast back into the image. So come down to the bottom and go to the curves tool, select three points. Because we've done quite a bit to this image, we just want to bring some contrast back. Now this image, I want to make it a little bit darker than what it was originally. So I'm going to keep that in mind when I'm doing this. So I'm just adding a, a little S curve there just to bring that contrast back in. So looking at the shot, I think we could do with some exposure adjustments. So again, come down to the bottom, come to the exposure and let's just knock this down a little bit. It's probably about a third of a stop. I want to bring that down just about there. That looks good. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a copy of all of the adjustments there. I'm going to hold shift option control or command and then the letter E on the keyboard and that's now given as a copy of all of that onto one layer. So now I'm going to come up to filter and I'm going to come down to the bottom here. I'm going to use exposure software and this is snap art four. Okay. So I'm going to come down to the oil paint effect here. I'm going to click on detailed and along the side here, this is where you can make some adjustments on stroke length, paint thickness, photorealism so you, you can make these adjustments accordingly to your specific needs and interest and you will get some 
real different looks when you mess around with these. So let's come down to the bottom here. And what I do want to do is just change this angle of light because I want to follow where the angle of light actually is. And we can see that where that highlight is there in the eye. And we can also select a highlight color. So let's come down and make a selection on green. Just bring that right down so it's quite dark. So okay, that looks good. And then we can also add a vignette as well. So we can maybe just add a round vignette that's quite soft. So push that up a little bit. There we go. And hit down here, you can select the preset, which is canvas weave, uh, thickness. There's lots of different things you can do within this. And it gives you really nice different looks. I'm just going to select rough weave up there, bring the thickness down a little bit to so about there. And then I'm going to select apply so it will add this texture to the image now the main reason why I'm using it is is basically for the background and for the some of the clothes but you can see that on the actual skin it's not very good it does it like a painting it does its job so we want to take that away so come down to the bottom and make a layer mask and then come to your brush tool make sure it's on black I'm going to push this up to 100% and the hardness of a brush is at zero. So it's really, really soft and we're just gonna paint in. And we just wanna get rid of all that effect on any skin, some of the hair up here. So this is just gonna keep it more looking like a photo rather than an actual painting, but that particular tool you can use and you will get some nice effects with it if you want a real sort of painting effect then it, it will certainly give you that it's very very strong okay so now we've done that we've brought some detail back there what i want to do is bring the opacity down to about 17 percent and i'm just going to go over some of the clothing here because i want to take that effect away a little bit just so it's not as strong so I'm going to make the brush a little bit bigger. And just go over these areas here. I'm actually going to push this up a little bit higher. That's better. So just take your time with this stage. It's the, there's no rush with it really. You just want to take your time and make sure you get everything right. And make the brush smaller when you need to, just to get some details. Okay. So let's just double check, there's some areas over here that could do with some adjustment. There we go, that's looking good. Okay, so we can see that effect now come into play. If I take that on and off, you can see what that does. So like I said, it really, it softens that background, but it gives a canvas look to the background. And that's what I think is really important. And it looks nice, it looks like a canvas uh, without sort of compromising the image, so to speak, with the texture. Okay, so now we've done that, let's add some more texture, but what we're gonna do is add this dust. So if you go into Google and just search dust and scratches, um, textures, loads of them will come up. There's loads of free ones. So once you've got it, just use your move tool and bring it up to your image, let go. Control Command T to transform, and then let's move this to 90 degrees so it's straight and then come to the top and hold the shift key down and just drag that across now what I like to do is just make sure that I go over the whole of the image so I just crop out of the image as well so you can see that just make sure that we are covering everything and press enter and then come to your blend mode and you can change the blend mode to either lighten or screen you can change it to some other ones, but you will get some real funky effects. So if you look here, lighten is going to give us a better result. So now we've done that, let's bring the opacity right down. And you can see there that we're about 13%. So I'll probably drop that a little bit more to about there. And again, we're going to make another layer mask. So come down to here, come to back to our brush tool. And now what we want to do is Again, take away any area that is covering up skin. I'm going to push the opacity up a little bit higher just to 
get some detail back because I don't want any of that affecting the skin really because it will just look a little bit odd and in fact it will look like sort of scars on the skin so I want to get rid of that make sure that's done first and then I'm actually going to do the same I'm going to do it on any of the big areas that are on the clothing because again it will just make it look a little bit odd sometimes it can work depending on what your picture is and how creative you've gone with it so let's just get rid of this and you can see that I'm still using only about 60% flow it's just because it, it helps to blend it a little bit better so if you do go over areas that you want to keep it's not going to completely take everything away as you can see it just take a little bit of away but not all of it there we go so just down here there's a few little bits and just check the hair there okay that looks good so if we again if we look at that you can see we've just added that texture and again that's just brought some detail to the to the image and made it a little bit more interesting so let's do shift option command and e again so we now get another layer there with all the adjustments we've just made and what i want to do is come to the crop tool and i just want to straighten this up a little bit because it's a little bit wonky only by about half a degree as you, you can see there and make sure that generative expand is selected and just say okay to that and as always you've got multiple options there of what you want to do so it's uh, just going to bring this crop in a little bit because it's missed some of the edges there so I always like to do this just to make sure that I've not got any dead canvas space there we go it's going to click OK to that just crop it in a little bit so that's just given us you can see there it's just given us um, a little bit of a straighter image and just some nice textures on there okay so let's close that down so the next thing I want to do is come down to the bottom and I'm, I'm probably going to think about adding a look so a color lookup which is this one down here and if we come to the 3d LUTs, let's come down all the way down to the bottom to this green let's click on the little x there and then let's come to the opacity and let's just drop that now this is where you need to work out what the tipping point is so within this image as you can see zero percent what i'm looking at is the image i'm not looking at this up here I'm looking at when that color starts to come in and affect the whole entire image and what I want to do is just pull back a little bit from there so it starts at about 18% so I'm going to make this 15 and then what I'm going to do is just click on the eye just to see the before and after zoom in and we can just check things so if we look we can see that it certainly added some of that green but I think what we could probably do with is some adjustments in a curve just to bring back a little bit of warmth to the skin because we've got to remember we're using this as a reference it's not going to be exact because I haven't got the raw file but you can see that the colors on the skin is a lot more there's a little bit more warmth to the skin there isn't there so let's come down to here and let's make a curve selection and then let's go into the reds so if we make three points we've then got the ability to adjust the whites the grays and the blacks of this color so if we look at her skin we can see there that if i come to the whites i can warm up the skin tones by doing that and again it's these are going to be really really small adjustments really fine tuning this color so the black is is almost affecting the whole of the image on this which is what you'd expect so let's come to the greens and let's do the same let's just see what happens if we just tweak this so all I'm doing is pushing up and down and I'm, I'm looking at the image I'm not looking at the curve still I'm looking at the skin tones and just seeing what what they do and how much warmth I want in them so I think that's pretty good so if we look at that before and after you can see where we've just brought a little bit more warmth back especially when you look around the arm area here you can see that looks much better now okay so let's 
come to our history and take a snapshot and just see that there. So that was the original. That's what I've just done. The one previous is the one that I showed you at the beginning. So it's actually not bad. It's quite close, isn't it? The other thing that I did do on the other image was I come into the lips and I just toned these down a little bit because that red is a little bit too strong for this particular image. Now, there's lots of ways in which you can do this. There's, there's loads of different tools. What I'm gonna do is come to this tool here, the sponge tool, and at the top, I'm gonna to click desaturate. It's on 28% flow. And what I wanna do is just start painting that away. Before I do that, I'm gonna press Shift Option Command E just to get a snapshot of all the different adjustments I've just made. And I'm just gonna bring this flow down to about 11%. So let's have a look at that. Yep, yeah. so we've just taken that, that little bit of edge off of that red lipstick. So let's take another snapshot so we can see the difference, what that actually makes. There you go. So that would be your final image. Let's just bring this up to full frame. And you can see there, it's just given it a little bit more depth and a little bit more textures to the shot. Now, like I said in the beginning, this is just a reference image. I've only used that for the colors as inspiration. So you can look at different images, look at what these photographers are using because they know what they're doing when it comes to color corrections, color balances, and then you can tweak it and come up with your own sort of ideas and inspiration. So I hope you enjoyed that. Take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.